good to have you with us in this edition of the Urban Debate. Because we've often spoken about this one narrative that's been built by many governments, the ruling party in BJP is the centre in many states. And now state by state they're coming up with a law which they call is basically an anti-Love Jihad law, a law that will stop Love Jihad. Now each state is giving its own name. Essentially what it is, is a law that is supposed to stop forceful conversions and couples who get married, Muslim men who have marry Hindu women to forcefully convert them to Islam and at the end of it, that's the larger conspiracy that this law seeks to tackle. Extremely controversial, quite questionable if experts are to be believed in terms of whether it's constitutional or not and how it will be used. We're going to talk about the second part. Whether it is constitutional or not is for the courts to decide when it goes there. But we're going to talk about what we've repeatedly highlighted. The pitfalls of having such law. Why instead of using the existing sections in the Indian Penal Code, did the UP government feel the need to bring in this law? And how it can actually be misused? Now, let me give you an example. In an incident that took place in Kushinagar, the police went about looking into a complaint of an alleged forceful conversion or as they are now very easily referring it to including those in administration including those in police as love jihad so the kushinagar police got a complaint about an alleged love jihad case and they were prompt in acting based in ordinance that was passed on 28th of november they went running to this wedding ceremony of a Muslim couple based on information from some right-wing group one would assume we're not too sure they said they got this tip off a group of people they say informed them that a Muslim man was secretly marrying a Hindu girl now even when the couple's family and friends said no there is no such thing that both the man and the woman in this wedding were actually of the same faith they were still taken in for questioning they were still taken into the police station. They were still made to wait there for hours together while the police allayed their own concerns or maybe was just trying to convince the right-wing groups who had complained that, look, we acted and there is no case here. Essentially, it was a Muslim couple getting married in Uttar Pradesh. And the police landed up at their doorstep, took them away to the police station because they thought it was an interfaith marriage which was being done so that the woman could be forced to convert her religion from Hinduism to Islam. This is a classic example of how people can be harassed knowingly, unknowingly, doesn't matter. But when you take something like this so seriously with concrete evidence of how widespread or large scale it may be, then you give a chance for abuse of the law to take place. I'll give you some more examples. I am going to get into the details. Remember, the ordinance only got its approval on November 28th. Today is December 11th. It's been barely a fortnight. On December 2nd, there was another such case where action took place, where families had given consent, but the cops stopped the interfaith wedding. They said, you can't. Because as per the new law, now you have to go and take permission from the DM. Don't you know? Four days ago, we passed an overnight ordinance. And that ordinance says you need to take permission from the district magistrate before you get married. Make an announcement certain days in advance. Prove that you're doing this by your own will. And only then can you get married. Even though this wedding was being held by, as per Hindu rituals, by the way. Why? Because some third party fringe group objected to the wedding. On December 3rd in Sitapur, father of the girl alleges forced conversion. Sitapur cops add provisions of the new law and FRS file against seven people for kidnapping the girl. In Bareilly, in fact, Bareilly has actually become a hotbed for such instances. In Bareilly on December 5th, an FRS file bases a complaint by the father the girl had been kidnapped. The daughter landed up at the police station, denying kidnapping, confirmed that she had married on her own accord. December 6th, Moradabad. 
Police arrested a Muslim man again under this new law. This is again after the girl's family claimed that oh, forced conversion is happening. The girl, the wife came and she said, we got married in July before the new law came into the picture. She also claimed that she married out of her own choice. But because there was a case file, you got to do the running around now. And now this case which has come from Kushinagar. There are actually some more examples, especially from cities like Lucknow, Bareilly, where more and more such instances are turning up. It's a waste of time, frankly, for the police as they go running around looking into these complaints when nothing actually turns up. Let's say good evening to Anila Singh, spokesperson for the BJP. Deshwata Negam, advocate with the Supreme Court. Mr. Kailash Vasudev, senior advocate with the Supreme Court. Dr. Vikram Singh, former DGP of Uttar Pradesh. And Sharad Pradhan, senior journalist, also joining us right now. Now, Anila Singh, I want to start with you. And I have some more examples. Uh, frankly, it's been two weeks, so it wasn't difficult to find at least a dozen of such examples where the new law has already been used, but nothing came out of it. Isn't this concerning that the law is being used to harass people? No, I don't think so. Laws are being You're not concerned? <laughs> or you don't think laws people are, are being harassed? Not to harass people, rather to facilitate them. And if somebody has not done anything wrong, then they should not be scared of it. So you are saying but it's I, okay if the police lands up at your house every week, drags you to the police station to just prove where you're from, who you are, if you got married by your choice, if your name is Anila or if it is something else and ask you to prove documentation. It's all right for you to do that on a weekly basis? Absolutely. Why not? If I'm Anila, then I do not have anything to uh, be scared wow. of. Wow, Anila I'm saying, I mean, to what extent can you go to deny of. what's happening on ground and how it's not a problem? I Okay, go ahead, please. Finish your answer. You don't see anything wrong here. Your side. From my side, I don't think so. there is any sort of problem in that. If you're not doing anything unlawful. I mean, we know it very well that in today's... So, day, on, on the wedding eve... On the if wedding eve, a, a, if a couple is dragged to the police station country. and made to wait there all night, a couple of the same religion, same faith, because the police refuses to believe that, if a girl has to take hours to prove that she was by birth a Muslim and not a Hindu who converted, she by choice is marrying this man, the families are in agreement, but because some third random party, a fringe group, went and gave a complaint or an information, a tip-off, a rumor to the police, you I think it is all right for the police to break yes, up a right. wedding no, on I mean, that no, night, question, drag the family to the police station, district. and you're sitting here and saying it's all right. Why what not? Absolutely. What a shame. It is absolutely shame. all right. And let me, uh, you didn't allow me to complete, Tanvi. When I got married, when Vikram Singh Ji got married, when uh, 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 Deshwadan Ji got married, when Sharad Ji got married at that time, to get your marriage registered was not compulsory. But in today's date, if you get yes. married, you have to get your marriage registered. No, no Anila saying nobody of... ever barges in when you're doing it as per your own rituals. No, Anila saying, please, I mean, don't, I mean, don't, be, don't be, don't be ridiculous on this show tonight. I am, I am, I'm amazed you're saying this. Kaun si shadi mein, kaun se mandir mein, kaun se mandap pe, police aati hai, registry karne ke liye, aap mujhe batai please. Kaun si jagai ye hota hai? Just imagine. मैंने मैंने दो वर्जन्स किए, because two of us were from different parts of the country, we did two different ceremonies, two different kinds of ceremonies. Nobody ever questioned us. What are you talking about? The registration that happens in a government office is a completely different matter. Everybody knows what the procedure is for that. Everybody follows that procedure. That is not what the case is here. Please don't try to normalize it just like your party has normalized this term, love jihad, which shockingly, Vikram Singh, the police is using today. The police is saying, we love jihad ki complain aai, hum chale gaye. That's how normalized it has become, Mr. Vikram Singh. Is this the police's only job in Uttar Pradesh to go and check up on who's marrying whom? Tanvi, let us not for a moment ignore the problem at hand. There is a problem. If you go to Wikipedia, you will find grooming of British girls, grooming of Swedish girls. And if the vast preponderance of boys is of one community and a preponderance of girls is of one community, don't you think that it is unnatural and there is a problem? 
and it does not say marriage i don't know love, where, where is the where you are getting these statistics from mr vikram singh <laughs> uh, i would i would wikipedia. urge you and caution you against wikipedia uh, wikipedia uh, and whether that's a credible source of information to anything but if you are quoting even that how many cases mr singh coming from cases and also another 400 from sweden i mean wikipedia was not drafted by the ips association much as i would like to believe it has not been drafted by and let us not sweep underneath the carpet love is totally acceptable but coercion fraud deceit is just not if i disguise myself you ask mr alila singh but if i disguise my name as sultan ahmed and try to entice a person that is a crime if i try to deceive a person that is a crime and in the, let, do not make think for a moment let me tell you once and for all this is a ground reality and we cannot ignore it how many I cases dr vikram singh sir I could give how many cases number. sir and if for the moment you believe that it is not a problem then i i have hands on experience of handling such cases it would be living in a fool's paradise to say that this problem does not exist there is an element of deceit this element the, uh, there is quoted, absolutely no statistic available to us i am ready to be convinced it is a problem <laughs> mr deshratan nigam and i have had detailed conversations time and again he is again here to make his case uh, dr vikram singh i have no no problems listening and looking at evidence but every time i ask this question about evidence of what has been proven in court of law as a large scale conspiracy there isn't the government says there is no large scale conspiracy in nia says there is no large scale conspiracy sit of uttar pradesh says there is no large scale conspiracy there may be few complaints that have been filed i am sitting here tonight and telling you in the first 14 days of this ordinance being passed sir there have been a half a dozen cases where people have been harass without any reason then we if you care to listen there are 13 sections in this ordinance and it is religion neutral why should it worry any community it because only one community is oh, getting targeted ah ha ha then the person uh, who uh, ever uh, that is very correct ki taarif pe kinta chhu raha hai ji because Agar only one ta community is party. getting targeted mr vikram singh that's the whole absolutely. point absolutely there is a story that's come in the it papers today better. of how it's in two better. similar instances the reaction of the uttar pradesh police mr singh was different where the, where the girl was hindu and where the girl was muslim the reaction in the two cases was completely different after the new law came in sir you may be you police. may be you may be uh, uh, willing to not read I into this i i will and i will say it as it is you are looking at with a jaundiced eye with a sense of one sided judgment you are being judgmental it is not for the police to go after anyone but where there is merit in the case the police have a job to perform and they are paid to perform a job if you feel so strongly about it there are the court laws open and the dgp is there make a complaint but if you feel that a complaint is made and the police can sit and uh, wait for the time to investigate, <laughs> investigate much as 14 Chan- cases were looked into by the up sit <laughs> and they came out and said <laughs> that there is no findings of a larger conspiracy in cases where they did find that the man had treated the woman the man was put behind bars i would not like to give the impression of being a cosmopolitan at the cost of field that what the downright conspiracy that is being played on the ground see the conspiracy see the danger it's not only in india it is the world over now <laughs> mr sharad pradhan i am too cosmopolitan to understand sir, this sir please go ahead and tell us what's going on what's going on in cities like kanpur in cities like bareilly where people are just rushing to the police stations because they cannot in today's day and world handle the fact that an interfaith marriage and an interfaith couple can get together Hello, Mr. Sharad Pradhan. Oh well, I I I didn't hear that it was for me. Well, I am I am I am glad that you have taken me in because I was quite uh, uh, I mean I I was not surprised at what uh, Mrs. Anila Singh was saying because she is used to she has to make her brownie points by not finding any fault with anything that the government does. So she has to you know circumvent um, and make things light of what the reality is. She I, I mean I don't take her seriously at all. But I am shocked at Mr. Vikram <laughs> Singh, who I, for whom I have had, always had a lot of respect. But of late, I am finding some some change in his attitude towards the wrongdoings of the police. <clears throat> I don't know how, why he should be citing cases of uh, Sweden and Norway and uh, when in, the, the and right the under his his very police that he is headed, 
they have not been able to um, uh, mr vikram singh the tanvi was asking you to quote statistics from uttar pradesh and i am surprised how you somebody like you a capable you know, former dgp of the state circumvented that issue and started talking about sweden and norway when the fact of the matter is that you know, i i have i have written on this that's why i am i have confirmed from your dgp's the, the, the dgp's office that out of the 14 cases that tanvi was citing eight were found to be false and they were all cases they were all these of cases even the other ones even the sixth remaining ones were not of love, the of the nature of jihad, love jihad that is being made out by this government only to prove their point they this government unfortunately has got into this habit and the police always becomes whichever government is there the police gets on to becoming more loyal than the king to prove of every the whole structure is built on falsehood to magnify an issue to an extent that people start believing that falsehood to be true and we everybody is known that when the police itself is not confirming not saying that there are so many cases and they then they express regret because the boys and girls the what this what the government is trying to project is that all hindu girls irrespective of their education and status are duffers and they get easily enticed by any stupid muslim boy which is crazy to believe that is utter nonsense it's and a, only it's a a naive and, even and if we muslim say there muslim are a few that. cases because, because you know the girls are not all mr sharad pradhan if we say a, 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 there were a few cases even in those that sit probed where mm-hmm. there was a case yeah, yeah, of yeah. cheating the where Kanpur, there was a case Kanpur, of Kanpur, false Kanpur, identity Kanpur, which is what vikram singh is talking about the ig of kanpur who was heading and and this nine member sit that was constituted in kanpur by the ig he eventually said ki nahi most of these cases turned out to be false there was not even you know they were even trying to prove that there was a conspiracy and a group of foreign a foreign funding was being done all these allegations were there which the government tried to highlight and magnify and project all over the place and eventually they all turned out to by the same administration they found out to be false and i am shocked that somebody like mr vikram singh i am really pained to find that he is not taking yeah. cognizance of the i will ask mr vikram singh somebody, to respond to that somebody yes. is being harassed in on the day of their wedding this lucknow case that tanvi you cited was crazy the boy and the girl the family both of the even the, the case the of the kushinagar case boy. yes and the both the boys and girls educated ones the families were willing they, they decided to get the girls and without conversion they were planning to marry with both the rights first the hindu rights then islamic rights yeah. and they were stopped they were picked yeah. up from the from yes that was a lucknow up. case where they were willing to do it with the hindi rituals as well yes, <laughs> yes. mr vikram yes, singh please respond please respond make friends. your point please and yes they, vikram singh the police said you know what the, what the what the police commissioner here said Tanvi. that no this would have led to conversion it is on the presumption they are all trying to get brownie points from the chief minister They, okay because okay. it is his agenda mr shahbazan i'll come back to you let vikram singh respond to what you have said here that we use of strong word does not give me logical consistency and at my station of life i have nothing to gain or lose what i'm saying is like my dying declaration because what i'm saying is on the basis of hands on experience i have nothing to gain or lose from whatever i say i of course mr sharad pradhan is more like a brother a very sincere and an old time friend but that still does not mean that i am not accountable to the ground reality the ground reality means mr sharad pradhan if there is corona pandemic if there is a symptom that symptom is universal similarly if there is a symptom you cannot wish away what's happening in england it is all data with photographs and allegations who the boys are their names and photographs perhaps the government the particular government did not choose to bring out the accused in the open domain for fear of what they i perceive as appeasement politics that is why they were not nailed they were not named and they were not shamed i singularly feel that when this ordinance is religion neutral where is the problem because it, boy, i just gave tries, examples mr so vikram singh where p- innocent couples have been harassed where willingly marrying adults have been harassed there is a problem allow me to give you another example allow me to give you another example sir I will, I will give you another example where is the problem the problem is when the law gets misused and because the entire machinery and the setup in the state is so convinced that there is this conspiracy that they have the freedom to now question and trouble everybody this is a story that happened in uh, with a couple from merot 
a couple from Merat who yeah. actually were working together in a call center, an interfaith couple, they fell in love. Their family, the girl's family did not agree, did not accept this, they were extremely upset. So the girl and the boy, they left, the magistrate. they shifted to Merat, they got married four months ago. They went to a temple first to get married and then later on in Merat. The couple's landlord, the couple's landlord complained. The police filed a charge under the news section, held this man, questioned him for hours without even filing an FIR. No complaint from the family, no forceful conversion, no conversion. So the police did a misgender by asking them question and inquiry. So I have half a dozen cases in two weeks. Say, in two weeks, Mr. Vikram Singh. Don't you, think the, don't you think the police have a duty to perform, to ask and question if there's a complaint? Do you mean to say that there has to be a complainant registered duly by the government? A complaint a du the, from the rules of business, anybody As can make a complaint. It's the job of the, the police, police to inquire into it. In Why should not the police yeah. And tomorrow, if they do not come, uh, come inquire, you say the police were absolutely doing nothing and were idle and they did not complain. They inquire into complaint. When I say that it is religion neutral, a Hindu boy can be imprisoned also absolutely. for the same stimulus as the Muslim, then where is the problem? But since you probably I'll you tell see you, that. I'll tell you there. I'll tell you there's a case of a, of a Muslim girl who converted to Hinduism to marry a Hindu boy Sharath, and in Sharath, Lucknow. Sharath, and that girl. Sharath, that girl it's turned into a Hindu. Mr. She was Sharad married in the R.S. Samaj. And the husband is not only ill-treating her, he's thrown out, out her out of the house. And the police has not taken any action. This is how your police works. My police, it's our police, your police too. You are also taxpayer, it's our police. And the good, bad and the ugly, I we have cause. And let us say, well, we can agree to disagree on that. And again on that point, Tanvi, may I submit please? That if it is religion neutral, if the law is the same for all communities, where is the problem? I'm asking okay, you. Okay, let me let me bring in two problem. other Why panelists. Two panelists the haven't spoken so far. Where is the problem, is... Mr. Kailash Vasudev? My problem is that in two weeks' time, we have half a dozen cases uh, where people were harassed for no reason, simply because there was a third party, a third party that actually tipped off the police, and hours went into questionnaire. One wedding was stopped. That is a problem for me. Good evening. I would like to remind, remind all members of our panel that in 1969, in Kerala, there was an allegation that there was wholesale conversion of people from different girls from different religions into Islam for the purposes of matrimony. The allegation was that these people were being funded. There was an organized system to get girls to move to Islam and then get married. One of the persons who was accused applied for bail. The bail was rejected and the High Court said that, look, there are thousands of such cases which we are being told about. Let there be an inquiry into this matter. It's a reported judgment of 1969 in Kerala. The matter then went to the government for investigation. The NIA and all came into the picture. And they said there was no truth in these allegations. That man's bail didn't come. He had a tough time. He eventually managed to secure bail and move out. But what is interesting is the report given by the NIA and the authorities said there was no truth in these allegations. These were motivated. In UP, it has been a matter of some concern to everybody that these kind of interfaith marriages are brought about by force. The expression love jihad has been coined. I'm not able to understand the expression love jihad because love is love, jihad is jihad. You cannot have a jihad against love no. and then you cannot have a love for jihad. These are two oxymorons. The investigations which you refer to in Kanpur were I think with 17 cases, not 14. Out of which three cases, they said that possibly this has happened and the other 14, they said no. This kind of a conversion has not taken place. You bring an ordinance for the purposes of stopping this interfaith marriage and compel the couple to obtain permission from the SDM. Now, it's a voluntary marriage in many a case. Some cases, maybe you are in offense of the particular statute. That is the ordinance which has now been passed. It's an unpronounceable ordinance. It's a very long word. I'm sorry, I won't be able to get the Hindi versions right. 
So under this ordinance, any couple wanting to get married has to get the magistrate's blessings. Yes. Supposing the magistrate says no, you are stopping somebody from professing their fundamental rights guaranteed under the constitution, article 19, and the spate of other articles say, right to religion, right to faith is yours. If a person decides to get into a matrimonial alliance with somebody of a different religion, what stops you? Supposing we have in our country, we have the Sikhs, we have the Buddhists, we have the Jains, we have the Parsis, we have the Christians in three divisions. You have the Protestants, you have the Roman Catholics, you have the Syrian Christians, you have the Orthodox Christians. You have tribes. Tribes are protected under the constitution, under the various schemes, including specific provisions in the schedules. What happens if a person from a tribe decides to get married to a non-tribal? Are you going to hold the person responsible under this act or this ordinance so far? Please understand, making these kind of laws makes the government look draconian. We are a democracy. Everybody has a right. I am not in an individual case. It doesn't matter. What matters is the principle. If anyone decides to get married outside his faith and has the concurrence of the family, both boy and girl, can you stop it? Today, it is becoming very common at work centers, call centers, offices, business premises, places where people are involved. And I'm not speaking of the upper strata, I'm speaking of the lower strata of society. People decide to get married. It is matrimony. It is not an offense. You are making it an offense mm. by empowering the magistrate to decide whether the couple is right or wrong. Who are you to decide? Where is your power? Which authority under the constitution grants you this authority? We, have, we are framing laws essentially for partisan purposes, mm. depriving the individuals of their basic rights. And that is where the hurt is coming. You were speaking just now about situations in England and in Norway and in Sweden and what have you. Those are totally different situations. Those are being done by the immigrants. Right. And 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 and, Not, and, our, and our system and our and our setup is completely different from what may be happening there. We have come up with a law to tackle what we believe is is, is a large scale problem. But instead of you know tackling a forced I, conversion I, I, I problem, to, I, 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 we I are there questioning every to, interfaith couple no, no, about their something. wedding, stopping their wedding, jailing them for a wedding, no, no, or, or cancelling or pushing their weddings. There, there is one more issue here. If you remember. A couple of years ago, when the ISI movement was building up in the Middle East, a lot of Muslim girls from England went and joined this jihadi movement. They are now wanting to come back to England. They've come back. They're in custody and the like. There are instances galore of this kind when people volunteer to support the ISI. They've gone back home. Why have they gone back home? Because they want the protection of their families. They realize they made mistakes. It is a voluntary disclosure on their part that they have made errors and they want to go back to the countries which, from which they have been expelled. Right. There, the governments are not stopping them from coming. They're only considering whether they're giving, to give them the benefit or no. They've gone back to England. They're staying there. <laughs> now, in India, what we are doing is, with these kind of laws, the five other states are thinking of the similar law, but they're not able to draft it correctly. Madhya Pradesh is thinking. Other states are thinking of this law. Why are we bringing this into a situation where an interfaith marriage is bad? Can you stop a Parsi from marrying a Christian? Can you stop a Christian from marrying a Hindu? Can you stop a Sikh from marrying a, a Muslim girl? I mean, where are we coming? Where are we heading? So, is it, so let me ask this question. Is it, is, 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 this law should essentially apply to all interfaith couples? Um, I can barely In Uttar hear Pradesh? you. There, there is, Will they have to do? Uh, will all interfaith couples have to go to the DM sixty days in advance, prove that they are marrying out of choice, and whether or not they intend to convert religion? No, no. Assuming they want uh, to convert religion, it's by consent. Who's the magistrate to stop them? Okay, fair let, enough. Fair enough point. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Nigam. So let us be very clear: this law did not come out of vacuum. Anybody who is aware of the system knows that the UP Law Commission recommended it, and you must read that report. I yes. think nobody on the panel seems to have read it. Yes, it's a report three and years old. It is, and, and that recommendation was there, and so therefore the UP, UP is 
is is not that it's yogi adityanath's uh, imagination of fascination you must go through that report you would know the real uh, things and that and as rightly pointed out by uh, dgp vikram singh that it is religiously neutral if you read the preamble it is religiously neutral mm. and why only why only everybody call, says why only uh, uh, girls from one particular community and men from because under islam conversion is prohibited under sharia and lot of people believe in that and there and, and and if you convert the punishment is death please remember that if anybody who's read quran and hadith you would know what it means and that is why you if you defame a prophet a person is immediately killed also so there are very serious issues out there and we don't have the issue pro, process of conversion in hinduism there is no concept of conversion and uh, uh, the example that you gave of kushinagar that is that is where the girl was missing also and there was a complaint by her family and there was also a complaint of this mm-hmm. you know interfaith kind of a marriage and therefore the police had gone and they wanted some blood relative to be there to say when the brother came and the girl was said to be missing and the girl came and the brother came he said we don't have a problem so dgp is absolutely right when when it is said <laughs> if there is a complaint then the police so has essentially to investigate. because parents in our in, in our country in many parts are still not able to accept that their daughters who become adults can marry out of their own choice can marry out of the religion into another religion you are saying they're going to take help of right wing groups they're going to take help of the police they're going to claim it's a case of abduction a case of cheating a case of kidnapping uh, and a case of forceful conversion and then the police will go pick up a young couple harass them for hours harass the girl for hours even though what she is doing is her right is her choice is a fundamental right by law in this country but she must spend Let hours me. mr nigam proving this you are saying this Let is a religion neutral uh, law which is in place but i am looking at two examples in bareilly in saturday the police not entertaining the complaint of a father who said his his daughter had married a hindu man after conversion the police said okay they checked the women uh, the woman said no it is by my choice they said let it be in moradabad though they went and arrested and jailed a man for the same complaint me, you are saying it's so religion me, neutral i don't think the up police sees it that way let me let me answer i think you you, know, you came back to me after 25 minutes allow me this privilege of at least you know uninterrupted 2 uh, 3 minutes okay, otherwise go ahead, please. The entire flow is broken because i heard mr kailash was there for a very very long time and uninterrupted by you or anybody else so allow me that privilege as well now l- let us see uh, what is exactly happening now once the complaint comes police has to investigate police cannot abdicate its responsibility i'll give you example of matrimonial cases <laughs> where for one genuine cases you will find equal number of uh, you know uh, false cases also but the law is not repealed Hello? law is for the genuine cases if there are wrong cases they have to be taken to task here also the law is good if the implementation is bad we must concentrate on the implementation of it and try to improve the system if police is making a a, a a a kind kind of you know there is a collusion between the complainant and the police police has to be taken to the task but you cannot say after the recommendation of the up uh, law commission when the this this uh, law had uh, recommended then you cannot say the law is bad law has been good and if you look at the supreme court's lily thomas case which is very clear also conversion of a non muslim without any real change of belief in islam and only for marriage is void so this is anti conversion law not for marriage please remember that consent has to be free in interfaith marriage nobody is denying interfaith marriage there has to be a free consent where there are frauds no but we are lock- a couple wanted to okay. get married 3 days have, after this ordinance BM came came complaint is in to play is mr nigam uh, and uh. we sent them back because we said oh you need dm's permission to get married that can we do not believe the wikipedia and not you believing what he is here say you did not you don't believe the wikipedia and now you are picking up cherry picking on isolated instances and jumping to conclusions 
I really don't know what kind but of logic. But that's the law, Mr. Vikram Singh. Sure. The law says you need to take permission <laughs> from the DM. If you don't, you will be jailed. Of course, the law is law, and they have to jolly well take permission till the law is not struck so down. So then, that, that's the exactly what I'm asking, Mr. Deshratan Nigam. Mr. Deshratan Nigam is saying it's not to stop anybody from getting married. It's about forceful conversion. I'm saying the law says no. It is. You do need permission to get married, Mr. Nigam. Please, please let me read the preamble for you. Hmm. That will clarify okay. all this. The preamble to the act is to provide prohibition of unlawful conversion from one religion to another by misrepresentation, force, undue influence, coercion, allurement, or by any fraudulent means or by marriage, and for the matters connected there there with an incidental thereto. So both are interrelated out here. Please understand. Anybody who's read the preamble would certainly understand. I I come prepared, and let me tell you, the preamble is so clear. If the marriage conversion is only taking place. For the purposes of marriage, or vice versa, and Lily Thomas's case is very clear. This is in consonance and in tune with the Supreme Court case. And in fact, uh, Mr. Kalash Vasudev was talking about fundamental right. And in Reverend Stan Slav's case, it has been clearly laid down. There is no fundamental right to convert. You have freedom to religion. There is no fundamental right to convert. Please remember that. So conversion has to be free. Interfaith in interfaith marriages, it has to be free consent. I am not against it. A lot of my friends have married, but there was a free consent. As long as there is a free consent, nobody should have a problem. Nobody on this panel will have a problem. But okay. the moment the consent has been taken by fraud, then it has to come into the picture. And please remember, this is an issue. Even Kerala's Christian community has come out very vociferously against it. Now they they slightly uh, you know awakened slightly late. So. Let us not, you know, wipe, uh, you know, brush everything under the carpet. For every one case, even if there is one case, law is to be, to be used for that case, and it is for that matter. And let me tell you, we you said about the other laws existing. There are many provisions here under this law which does not exist in IPC, and I can quote them if you want me to. <laughs> if the law is misused to harass it's common it's people, mis then it's not serving its purpose. That's then simply my met, point. If, if even if the ratio of, of legitimate cases versus cases there where there was no grounds at all is the same, it's it's a problem, Mr. Deshratan Nigam. It Let is a problem. If the law Let is about answer. stopping forceful <laughs> conversions, it should have nothing to do with seeking permission or seeking validation uh, for your for your wedding. But it does. If, if That's I the take problem. Your argument. The Allahabad well, High Court order, which, which quoted the Supreme Court once, saying that right. it uh, has already been set aside, saying this is bad in law. No, Allahabad High Court is wrong. It is against Lily Thomas's case. That will be set aside. Let me tell you that. Will be. It hasn't clear. been yet. No, oh, but the someday Supreme this Court this law this law may also this court. ordinance and law may also reach the Supreme Court. No, no. Please remember, Supreme Court law will prevail over Allahabad High Court. And Supreme Court law, Lily Thomas is very clear, which is... Okay, let me get Allahabad. it, Mr. Kailash Vasudev, because you raised certain points no, in this no, law. No, yes, Mr. Vasudev. Just give me 10 seconds. No, just give me 10 seconds. Okay, 10, 10 seconds. seconds. Mr. Mr. Nigam, just one question. What does Lady Thomas no, deal with? No, let me, let me hold on, hold no, on. Hold just on, question. Hold on. What does Lady Thomas' no, case deal with? I'm, 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 I'm coming to that. There, is, there was That's a man who tried to do two marriages, a converting and doing two marriages. If you recall by that, Gami. And, by and Gami. By Gami. Yes. And that's right. Therefore, that's right. that issue had raised, and they had laid down the principle. Now let Correct. me come down. If Sanvi, if I follow your uh, argument, then uh, then uh, you know the matrimonial law should be abolished because I see a lot of uh, false cases coming in, but there are a lot of genuine cases also. The law has to serve, and the raw mm -hmm. false cases have to be punished. There is a provisions for punishment for such false cases, and if the police is doing something wrong, they have to be taken to task. Okay, police. yes. <laughs> police doesn't act in cases of complaints of rape and murder, as this is acting in such cases, only to please the political masters. You see, Lily Thomas in the by, is, 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 is the first of the bigamy cases which come up in the terms of conversions. It lays down a principle which is totally different from what we are saying here. It says you cannot use this kind of a thing for purposes of defeating the rights of an individual. Here what okay. we are doing is we are making the magistrate the supreme judge of my marriage. Supposing the magistrate doesn't give permission, what happens? He goes to court. You get into litigation. So the best years of the life are ruined. You must then understand 
that the power of the magistrate has to be restricted. You cannot give him unilateral powers to decide what he has to on the basis of statements of third parties. You go ask the couple, talk to them, close it. Don't bring in the parents, don't bring in any bills because they're mature adults. The moment you bring in this kind of a thing, you're leading evidence in a situation which doesn't call for it. I would detest to see a person wanting to get married, having the whole world witness what they're going through. It's an embarrassment. Lily Thomas does not contemplate what you are saying. The Law Commission in UP looks at the purposes of conversion. I think it's a 2014 report. Looks into this matter from a different perspective. It deals with the perspective, again, based on the Lady Thomas principles. Hmm. If I'm wrong, Mr. Nigam, please correct me. Therefore, when you look at your law, when you look at the positions which emanate, please make sure that the rights of a young couple or an, any couple to get married and not trammeled by these kind of laws which become draconian in their effect. Who would like to have a litigation for getting married? Is it fair? Is it the contemplation of the system? I'll answer. Okay, Mr. Nigam, go ahead, please. See, let me tell you, uh, as I said, if the consent is not free, then the law comes into the picture and law is very clear on that. And somebody, if the fraudulent consent has been taken, there has to be a mechanism system to redress that. And SDM's office has been created for that. If somebody has a better suggestion, I think that can be incorporated and can be seen if there is a better suggestion to that. So therefore, well, there has to be a mechanism if a law is violated. And therefore, no problem if there is free consent. And therefore, it has two components. This uh, has the uh, conversion aspect and the marriage aspect. Both are there. It is not only marriage per se. Marriage for the purposes of conversion or vice versa. So say. how do you so prove that? Thing. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> this. Let's talk My about this, God. Mr. Dhanaygam. How do you prove yes. that I am not converting simply for marriage or I am not marrying simply to convert? or vice versa. What will you have to do to prove your intent? See, the fact is the primary evidence would be both husband and wife. If the wife tomorrow comes that she has been fooled into it, then it would be a primary evidence. And, and the other supportive evidences have to be there. For, for circumstantial evidence and other aspects have to be taken into account. So primarily, let me tell you, the entire trial takes place the the issues will be uh, discussed, thrashed, cross questioning will take place as the normal process that where takes pressure place. gets created it, from the cases, family, from the, the third party right wing something. groups, from the police, where everybody will sit on the girl's head and tell her this is wrong, you should not be doing it. There was this case that come, and I'm sure Mr. Nigam, since you very closely track these instances, you would have seen in a case in which this girl came in from Punjab with a guy on a bike to Uttar Pradesh. The guy was from Uttar Pradesh. They had met, interfaith couple, they had met on social media. They had reached the court to get married. The girl came, she stayed at the man's sister's house. She obviously discovered and knew by then that he was of a different religion. She still went ahead to the court to marry him. There they were stopped because there are people now, there are active groups who do the rounds not just of religious places where you can get married, but also courts. And they stopped it. And the police came and dragged them away. As the police was dragging away the girl and the boy, they were both yelling and screaming and pleading and crying and talking about love and how they were being separated and how she can't, the girl said she can't live without this guy. She shouldn't be separated. Somebody needs to come and save her. And hours later, after they had all been taken to the police station, after the families had all arrived, after discussion, uh, questioning, cross-questioning and everything had happened, the girl did come out and say, well, yes, he didn't tell me his identity. He fooled me. Let me, let me answer that. Yes. So now, let is that a you. case Very of cheating? Obvious. Let Very me obvious answer how, how it was I, done. Let, let, no, no, no. Let me, let me answer that as a lawyer, somebody who, who is aware of what the law is. Law, crime is not committed against an individual, it is com committed against public and the state. If in the first instance, the uh, fraudulent consent was taken, crime has already been committed. Now, subsequently, if it is condoned by the girl, even then, the case could not, cannot be withdrawn, except if you approach the court. 
the only high court would have the power and the constitutional court would have the power to quash that particular case because crime has already been committed it is committed against the state or public therefore you see when a case criminal case is there even in united states it's people of united states versus so and so or so and so versus people of united states in india it is said state versus so and so so the crime once committed can only be quashed by the Uh, high court no no i don't think you understood the case right don't know the no, 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 the no. case is very simple they took took them to the police station mr sharath padar i'm sure you know about it yeah, yeah. they took them to yeah. the police station and the girl changed her statement and she said yes she the guy hid her id hid his identity he just said his name is sonu he didn't say he's sonu malik i yeah. discovered because i obviously saw the way he was talking to his family so i then i knew but after that she went to the court with him and after that she did all this uh, you know uh, she she was heartbroken she was yelling she was screaming uh, at being separated uh, from the guy Let me that answer that. You know, obviously, one minute. Let me bring in Mr. Sharad Pradhan, please. And the police. Let, let and me, let what me, Mr. Negam is saying is talking of theoretical let law. Me. The how it is implemented is more important for common people. They are not lawyers. So Ordinary the, people are not lawyers. They and this and how the police deals with them and how they deal with you are two different things. So please let be practical answer, and pragmatic and see the look at the yes, ground sir. reality. Look at the plight of the people, the manner in which they are sure. harassed. Don't talk in Sharad theoretical Pradhan terms, ji. please, no, no, no. sir. Sharad Pradhan ji, I agree with you. The, it is the implementation which we are talking about, not the principle of the law. It exists. It's a good law. It is the implementation you rightly pointed out that has to be taken care of. No false cases, and if there are false cases, they have to be. There is a process that it has to be taken care of. If somebody, it's, if there is a crime, it has to be punished. Therefore, if police I, is doing I something, I cited this case of this girl who converted from Islam to Hinduism, and she is running from pillar to post. Can you can I come in, please? To get a case registered against the Hindu boy, and it is not being she done. She cannot. It she is a blatant convert. case, which is not being no, treated. That is, I am telling you the harsh reality. Please look at the Sharad, reality. Ah, Sharad Pradhan ji, she cannot convert. Islam does not permit conversion and such kind of marriage But marriages under Islam. From Islam, she can't. It's her choice, Mr. Nigam. Arsham, 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 she wants to embrace Hinduism. I'm sure she can. Her wife can. She can. I thought you would be knowing that. Our Samaj. I. There has been hundreds of cases where people from other religion have. Switch to our Samaj. Correct. And, okay. And Anila Singh wanted to make a point. Anila Singh hasn't for spoken for a. Uh, yes. Go ahead, please. Anila Singh. Um. Thank you so much, Sanvi. that after all you have given me some time and i i hope that you are not going to interject me before i complete my one minute i totally endorse what mr deshratan nigam ji has just now said that i think none of the panelist has gone through this law if you go through section 8 and section 9 of this law then many of your queries will be settled and make mr pradhan also read those because i don't know just now he said that he doesn't takes me seriously he may not take me seriously though i am official spokesperson of bharatiya janata party and i talk what my party says and what is my party's ideology i don't know who is sponsoring him to sit here and say against <laughs> the government so <laughs> he has to be that and secondly secondly second, oh, please keep quiet now and keep quiet now keep quiet now i told you i mean i know two points by keeping your people in good humor even if you have support also the reality is you are the sponsored person sitting here and debating Now, Tanvi. Secondly, I just want to say here, mm. you are saying you are you are bashing this I law in and out, I right, uh, laugh at left and right. Yeah. I have to say thing. I have to say here, please, Mr. Pradhan, let me complete. There, there are laws for uh, dowry, dowry act. Okay, there are laws for domestic violence. So, if we say that we have come across certain cases where the boy. or the groom or the husband had wrongly been named and he is in the jail so we should stop this dowry act or we should stop uh, dom, uh, act against domestic violence we know every year more than 15000 girls are being kidnapped to uh, to uh, to get into wedlock forcefully what where no, are you I getting this data from please i have been searching for data everywhere for credible information please tell me 15000 every year where 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 is this data from tell me your source uttar pradesh police is not behaving properly uttar pradesh is this uttar pradesh police's data section 8 and section 9 statistics are disturbing figures no 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 anila singh i am very concerned 15000 women are being kidnapped 
and forcefully uh, uh, being made uh, to convert the religion like and get into a marriage. It's Where is this data coming from? We have these official spokesmen. Jesus. This is what is the this BJP is data, some Sorry, government you, data, you, NCRB you, data? I have been you, trying you, to look for data you, everywhere. I have asked police also. domestic violence, you pick up dowry, you pick up any... Because NCRB gives me the data. Where is your source? What is your source? What is your source? Because many a times we have seen that certain... No, no, answer my question, please. Don't don't lecture me otherwise. Few of, few of the husbands or the boys, they are wrongly being named. So these these laws... No, no, I don't want few and uh, few and many and several and, and on all of these adjectives, please. Tell me, what is the source for this data? Don't quote data on my on my show if you don't have if you don't have the source, credible source for it. Unreasonably. Why I have a credible source. May I? This is neutral, neutral religion law. So don't write. I have a credible source. It's, it's called the Ministry of Home Affairs, and the Ministry of Home Affairs answer in the Parliament community. is: we we don't know the term love jihad. There is nothing to suggest or prove that love jihad exists in our country. This is the Home Ministry's response in the Parliament. If you have data about fifteen thousand cases where women have been kidnapped and forced into a wedlock to convert religion, kindly please go and give it to Home Ministry. Otherwise, don't quote this data here unless it's from a credible source. I'm completely out of time. I'm going to thank our panelists who have joined us on this panel. Thank you so much. The conversations are going to continue because if the law continues to be used to harass people, it is a problem. And I will tell you how systematically this is being done under the new law. Step one actually includes groups of people who track their neighborhoods, who track social media activities, who track people, youngsters, and the minute youngsters of two different religions, a girl who is a Hindu and a man who is a Muslim, become friendly, they interject. And they stop the girl there. They bring in the families. So round number two happens. If they're too late to stop them as they get into a relationship, they try to stop them when the wedding takes place. These set of people do the rounds of religious places, places of worship where you will go to get married, temples or even the court. That is how repeatedly you will see that when a couple turns up at a court, they are invariably first beaten up by a group, a right-wing group who got tipped off about the information, then they call the police. Almost every single case is about a group that called the police and gave the information and that the police went, looked into it and found there was nothing there, except that they wasted hours of their own precious time and the time of the citizens. If there is anything which is organized right now, it's the way there is a very clear attempt many a times with the support of the families who are not in favor of an interfaith marriage. A concerted attempt to stop these unions, to break these relationships. Think about it and think about where exactly is Love Jihad then happening. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation.